So I'm here with Camila Rula Medsen. I butchered her name in my, with my American <laughs> accent, but that's just the way it is. I did my best. That's fine. Nice. So, uh, you know, thanks for spending some time with me today. You're welcome. So tell me, where are we? We're at the National, Danish National Gallery. That was built, well, the old part was built in 1896 mm -hmm. and the new part in 1998. Yeah, I've been in the art business for 25 years almost now. And, uh, and I, used to, I started out studying economics and then uh, it was so boring that uh, I had I to do understand. something else I in understand. my free time. It's my, so it's my major, but it's, uh, <laughs> I have other interests as well. Exactly. And yeah. um, um, so I, I got a job here at the museum doing guided tours for kids. I also went to the university, uh, Copenhagen University, to study history of art. But now you also work with, you know, adults? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. folks who, are, yeah. who, who, who think they have an interest in art and yeah. want to purchase art. Yeah. And so what's the process that you take them through well, in order to, end up, you know, to help really choose a piece that's good for them? Good for them. Well, most, I have a company that, that I do guided tours. And um, so we go out and we see, the thing is, that's imperative, is you have to go out and see a lot of art. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find out what you like, uh, what makes you tick. The Danish artist that was representing Denmark this year at the Venice Biennale was Christina Röpschow. She is interested in what are we about, you know, uh, who are we and what are our political opinions and so on, what's happening, what's happening with, you can see the flag from Christiania, mm -hmm. or the three dots, the yellow dots, mm -hmm. what's happening with Christiania, what happened to that, you know, idealism from mm -hmm. then. Do you like it? Yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And as you said, your comfort is destroying my comfort. We all know that, yeah. right? Or your freedom is oppressing my freedom. Mm -hmm. So all tit mm -hmm. for tat. I mean, hey, it's been here a long time, but when you think about the times right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very appropriate. Yeah. Very often people tend to take what they like, which goes well with the sofa. Mm. And uh, uh, and it's, you know, it's a process, of course. And there's nothing wrong with getting a, a nice painting that goes with your sofa but very often that painting you'll happen to almost not notice it when a couple of years have gone by because it's it fits too well mm. so that's I think my thing that I have to help people do is sometimes choose works that either are the ones that they fall completely in love with or the ones that they really hate you know so you're that pushing takes, the envelope in one yeah, way or the other yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's, uh, it makes it more interesting, I think, and it makes the works of art have more value for many more years. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you also spend a lot of time keeping up with the current oh, yeah. Danish scene. Yeah. So I'm out every week seeing what's in the galleries, yeah. so that I know, well, this is the new guy, you know, one of the new hopes that is, he's kind of like a comet, a uh, rising art star. Uh, is Frederick Nebler, mm -hmm. and he's uh, he's still not uh, finished with his graduation from the uh, Royal Academy of Fine Arts. Good for him. Uh, yeah, so and very nice guy, and uh, really, really, you know, full on, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. everybody's got high hopes for him. So he yeah. still has a little bit of humbleness in him. Huh? Oh, yeah, I think yeah. he has. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think most of the people that do well as artists, they they all have their feet on the ground and they keep having their feet on the ground mm -hmm. and they don't lose touch with reality. Hi, it's Brian Chancellor. I'm here in Copenhagen in a neighborhood by the name of Newhound on a wet and snowy day. We're here at the Royal Danish Academy of Art to see one of the most highly rated up-and-coming artist by the name of Frederick Neblorol. So let's just go have a conversation with him. Hey, man. Hey, man. What's up? How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having us today. Yeah, no problem. So 
going into art to me or as an artist, whether that is a painter, a photographer, or an actor, to me is actually a huge leap of faith. Tell us about your path and how you decided that this was what you wanted to do. Yeah, I always been uh, inspired uh, by graffiti and uh, started to paint graffiti where, when I was around 10 years old, 11 years old and uh, then afterwards I was starting to draw up more like figures and faces and not only letters and then I'm and I was thinking, okay, I really want to do something creative. Then I was thinking about maybe being an actor, but then I was like, okay, I cannot perform like this, but uh, every day in front of a lot of people. But maybe I could find some other platform where I could perform something. And then I find painting. I found painting and also sculptures recently. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, something I'm working on, on a, yeah, a show called Still Leben, where I will make like, Maybe 10 uh, canvases, 12, where there is like only tables with mm -hmm. items standing on it. Just to bring like, bring like the old tradition still even back again. Is there anything in particular that, that inspires you? You know, is there a central theme to your art? Normally just like human beings in the streets. When I see people in the street and I'm like, okay, this is a nice face. And then I'm going to my studio and then I'm maybe making the face and maybe make it a little more ugly or, I don't know, like, I like to, I like to tell stories. I see myself as a storyteller. A lot of the publicity that you've been getting recently, some of them have described you as spontaneous, clever, and crazy. Yeah. Is that is that a fair description, or how, what is he, what do you think about I that? I don't know what the thing about clever, but uh, spontaneous, yes, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, I am very spontaneous. I wouldn't say that I'm like clever. I'm only clever in my like my own art, and I think that I have already found like a good stroke. And I, I think that I have, when when you are done at the Royal Academy after six years then it's really important to have something that you can like work through and work ahead. And I really think that I have something in that. So, uh, so yes, that's really good. So, you, so you're painting and now you're, at, you're getting into you know, clay and sculpture. Yeah, sculptures and ceramics. These are for like my degree show. After being here for six years, then you need to like show something the last time you are here mm -hmm. before you like graduate. And I'm so this is part of your final project? This is like my, uh, uh, my final project, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where I would like show 15 glazed stoneware sculptures with blue glaze. And it, this is like cobalt blue. And I really like, you know, if this was, has been maybe like sold in a shop, then they will maybe like cancel it because the glaze is not all over. But I really like that it's not all over and it doesn't like, that is so... So you, so you like the imperfection? I really like that. I really think they are super, super beautiful. So how long does a piece typically take you? I mean, is there, is there a typical yeah, of course. period of time? Yeah, it depends which piece I'm making on, but uh, a piece like this maybe normally take me like, I don't know, three or four hours, but then it maybe take me like two weeks to think about, okay, what will I make? Should I make like a yellow background and then a green table? And the clay takes more time, of course. We are like 184 students here, so you need to like wait on the other students, um, which is fair enough, but... Uh, Hard to wait your turn sometimes? Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to wait. Yeah. I hate to, you know, yeah. use time on nothing. Yeah. I need to like work all the day. I'm coming like seven o'clock in the morning and I'm going home like 12 o'clock in the night. In one of the videos though, you, uh, you used Coca-Cola and, yeah. and you also spit into the paint. Yeah, now, spit was, in the paint. Was that just because of the thickness of the paint or is there something about, you know, something deeper of like leaving your DNA in your pieces or what is that all about? It started with just because like I needed water for, for my paint and I needed to be like more thin. But uh, after I was thinking about it, then I really like like to spread my DNA into a piece of art. So sometimes I'm spitting in the paint. Recently I worked a lot with oil and you should never spit in oil paint. That's not good. But if you're making with like acrylic and water-based paint, then spit is really like working good. And my dreams 
after uh, ending six years here is to like start up and make a living out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I already have some people who are selling my stuff so I can not, uh, so I'm not able like to work and I can just like stay here in my studio and work with this and not work like in the normal public areas. But um, continuing selling and continuing making art, have a studio and then just make a living out of it would be like a big dream. Every day, you know, I'm, I'm like kissing the floor. You know, yeah. because I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. It's been a huge opportunity for me. And all people who are like creative and want to work like 24 seven with their art, I'm, I'm telling them, you know, please come to the Royal Academy and find yeah. yourself. Yeah. Also because you are like getting a stamp also, you know. That's also something about art, you know, there is canvases who is like cost like one billion dollars and then it's like only four strokes, you know, yeah. and then maybe a slap <laughs> like this, you know, yeah. and that's it, you know. So yeah. it, it really, uh, Art is not about how much there is on the painting, it's about who's painting right. it, you know? Right, um, yeah. 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 The Danish artists, how well do they do internationally? They actually do quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we also have a lot of international artists coming here. So if, when you go to galleries, you'll see that there's a lot of international artists, uh, you know, showing in mm -hmm. galleries in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is a very international climate. And this is Sergei Jensen, who is a uh, he's a Danish artist. Mm -hmm. He was brought up in Denmark, then moved to Hamburg. And uh, and Sergei Jensen started actually, you know, um, he actually took away colors from the canvas by applying chlorine. So he oh. was still applying something, not mm -hmm. paint, but mm -hmm. chlorine, which took away the mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. So he was painting mm, in an anti-paint way. Yeah. 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 So, and he's just, he does all sorts of different stuff. Uh, and it's actually quite, it can be very difficult to see if it's a Sergei Jensen or not, because he's always experimenting. Mm -hmm. But he's doing really well. And he's, uh, he's got huge shows all over the world. But, uh, and the National Gallery then had a huge show with him um, mm -hmm. last year. These are very established Danish artists, mm -hmm. uh, still living today. And this is Tel Air, a Danish artist who just turned 50, he had a huge uh, show at Louisiana celebrating mm -hmm. his 50th, really big. He lives in, in Österbro uh -huh. and he walks from Österbro uh, along the lakes and he mm -hmm. walks to his uh, studio in mm -hmm. Nansenskill every day. So he's very much into Copenhagen and, you know, just what is it, the Danish thing? Talia actually has a very good saying about art, that you need to, when you look at art, when you want to find something, when you need to buy something for yourself. Also. And it's very, very important to pick pieces that kind of leaves you with a stone in your shoe. Ah. Uh. Kind of annoying. Yeah, thought provoking. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just that little yeah. stone. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah that's so cool. if you can get that from a work yeah. of art, then it's yeah. perfect, yeah, because yeah. It, it's also, it will last you longer. Yeah. Yeah. John Kerner is actually in the same gallery as uh, Tel Air, Bo mm -hmm. Bjergård, ude i, in uh, Kødbyen in Meat Town. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he's uh, very political. He, the way he, as you can see, he's, he's actually quite known for this yellow color. Mm -hmm. And he has done a lot of se different series, uh, I think. What made him famous originally was probably he did this uh, series about Afghanistan and the Danish soldiers oh. that were killed in Afghanistan. Uh, so each he's done one painting per soldier that was killed. Oh wow! Yeah, and then he he's named it after that mm -hmm. soldier's name. There's never any faces in his work, so oh. it can be everybody. And what he's he's always trying to uh, talk about problems. So it's always in it, of course the spectator that is in front of the, the work mm -hmm. uh, is what you be, I mean, you have to make it your story yeah. like when you look at it, so yeah. it makes sense, yeah. yeah. All right. I guess you get, that, you get that little pebble. Yeah, exactly, that's the one. You would want mm -hmm. that. If you yeah. haven't got that, then it's, it's gonna become yeah. too boring too quickly. Yeah.